Kappa Kappa Podcast with Cat Wright. Well, thank you so much, Anna, Anna, Hannah, and Julia. Here we go. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> I thought yeah. I was going to mess that up. <laughs> Skillfully done. Skillfully done. No. <laughs> You know, um, I've only started doing this, like, uh, starting lockdown. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, like, uh, I was one of those people that, well, I'm still incredibly shy, but I just thought when it came to, like, lockdown, do you know what? I have nothing better to do, so I'm just going to, like do what everyone else started doing and do a podcast that's such like a thing to do when you're mid-30s like what have I not tried before hmm that's (laughs) That's really nice brilliant yeah and we're all shy as well so that's yeah (laughs) (laughs) found each other yeah you know I don't know if you were like this when we were younger but uh, I've been, well, I've been surrounded by alternative and rock metal music all my life. And when I was a teen, I was like, oh, I really wanted to be in the girl band, especially when it was like when you would see bands like Kitty. Yeah, mm-hmm. bands. Yeah, yeah, the new metal bands, uh, Kitty and stuff like that. Was it like for you, like growing up? Or did you always want it to be like, I don't like really call it a girl band, but in their band? For me, it never crossed my mind, actually. Like, for me, it was just about, like, I love this instrument and I'm just existing in this world. But I think then, like, the older you get and the more experience you have of the industry, then you feel more the need of people like you, you know, that have kind of gone through the same process as you in music. Because, I think, like, when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, my God, all I want to do all day is just play this instrument. And, like, um, yeah, just just do that for the love of music but um yeah I think yeah I think it depends who you meet as well Mm. yeah I remember when I was uh like my first band and I was like 13 or 14 or something but it was literally just like my friends who were two other girls but I I played guitar and I was like Lindsay just learn the drums god (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and yeah yeah just get God damn it, Lindsay. yeah like just just you know just, just learn it because you know you want to be in a band with people you get on with and you know yeah sadly oh, I was jealous. never coordinated never coordinated to oh. uh to do anything like that sadly for me I tried everything and nothing it wasn't meant to be for me what were you saying Julia sorry well, you know, it depends. I was saying I'm quite jealous because um, I started quite late. So I kind of missed that dreamy teenage part of, you know, picking up an instrument, being in a band with your mates. It was none of that. Uh, I mean, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, so that's probably why. Uh, so being a musician is not encouraged. You know, in this country, it seems like when you study music in school, they give you a proper instrument. And in my case, they gave us like fucking plastic recorders or something. Right. You can't be in a band with a recorder. <laughs> so when where I did, actually <laughs> where did you grow up Julia if you don't mind me asking it's Italy but it's not mainland it's like Sardinia which is an island just in the middle yeah of the middle I'm of the asking area. because I I grew well I was born in Portugal and I was uh well I was there well from when I was born duh and then until um I moved to the UK when I was 17 so I get what you mean growing up in Portugal you don't really have access to guitars or drums or not even a freaking keyboard it was like here have the have this plastic thing that sounds horrid yeah (laughs) sounds absolutely dreadful and learn this and uh and then that's it like we didn't have access to anything else so I know exactly what you mean I think the arts are taken less seriously as well like I grew up in Greece and it was the same like at my school they didn't take music seriously at all like me and my best friend were the two loners that like had to find some corner of the school to practice in because there was like no accessibility there and no like embracing of the arts and I don't know if you had you guys had this but like also with your families and like what it was like when you decided to be a musician and then it's like (laughs) Grab a cup of podcast with Cat Wright. <laughs> Is I think, especially with like um, you know parents, guardians, carers, whoever, um, at the time, especially I grew up late eighties, early nineties, that sort of thing, and um, when I was 
being aware of music um and i started listening to rock music from queen and uh iron maiden so my tasty music grew from there and uh our parents start seeing the behavior of rock stars and they're like oh no i really don't want my child to behave like that so when you say to a parent oh i really want to be a musician they're like no they think about you know the drug sex and rock and roll lifestyle it's just like no i'm scared of that no i don't want you doing that Mm. but now it's just different is so much different as a parent if my daughter says oh you know I want to start a rock band I say go for it but you know I don't really I can't teach you any instruments sadly <laughs> yeah I feel like no, parents don't I mean at least when we grew up like parents didn't talk enough about the catharsis of being in a rock band and how healing it is to be in a rock band mm. you know it's just they just look at the dark side of it and think it's going to be all sex drugs and rock and roll but <laughs> just the, the pure expression of it and the intensity of it um, yeah. yeah and the admin of it you know there's just a lot that... <laughs> there's a lot that goes behind there's the scenes lot. that people don't realize <laughs> just to balance yeah. it out yeah just to balance it out there's there's a, you know if you really want to put kids off it there's a lot of admin <laughs> it's, it's true lot, yeah. it's true there's I a mean, gender element to it as well yeah. in the sense that when you're a girl um and you want to be in a band and uh, depending on what instrument you want to play as well uh people might tell you oh very girly do you want to learn the bass why would you want to learn the bass take piano lessons play the violin that's not girly something more classy yeah it's not very it's not very girly or feminine but again that's that's cultural it really depends on 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 your on your family your surroundings um it depends on so many things but yeah it was an an added sort of obstacle (laughs) that (laughs) didn't make it very easy to decide oh yeah I'm gonna pick up this instrument and I wanna play rock music and metal and I don't wanna I don't wanna be one of the spice girls. I you know I wanna be in a cool band. That was a big thing in the nineties. I remember all of my friends at the time, especially the girls, they all wanted to be in spice girls, all saints, and to be honest. I wanted to form a band with uh, Courtney Love. He should have me. Um, that was my thing at the time, you know, the, the grunge. And I wanted to just be a part of that scene so badly that I, I didn't personally, I didn't dare tell anyone that that was my preference because it, that would get frowned upon. The whole connotations and, oh, you know, you're female in a rock band, uh, you're a groupie, you're not really a part of blah, blah, blah. It, you know, you get the, you get the idea. Uh, Mm -hmm. being so sexualized and it's just like yeah I didn't dare tell anyone that I wanted to be I'd rather be in a metal or grunge band (laughs) than being the you know in the wannabe Spice Girls respect to the Spice Girls but not really my thing (laughs) I mean I love the Spice Girls but (laughs) Yeah. Would you want to be in the Spice Girls? Though? Wouldn't want to be in them though. Yeah, no, no <laughs> can't quite see it to be honest. But yeah, but yeah. I loved what they um, stood for. I mean, you know, the whole get a girl power and be together and supporting each other, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Yes, but the music, no, not for me, yeah. sadly. <laughs> not for me no um but as a band now going back to to uh 2022 you've only started just like around what 2019 am I correct like when you started properly pretty much yeah yeah how did you all meet each other did did you have like mutual friends prior forming in a band or you knew each other how did that come about no um we love telling this story. Yeah. <laughs> you tell it or I tell it? Shall I tell it? Oh my God. <laughs> um, but no, this was, yeah, in sort of end of 2018, I think it was. Like, I had just moved back to London and was looking to form a band and just wanted to get the chops up and kind of start practicing so I used to I used to go to the studio called Alaska Studios um which was in Waterloo and um Hannah worked there and so then um and when I used to visit I used to see Hannah like apart from you know engineering and doing all the jobs there like also she'd be playing all these different instruments like piano and drums nice. and everything and um and so I was very intrigued and uh so then when it um came to finding band members she was the first the first person I contacted um like yeah 
It's crazy that, isn't it? Because after you, like, there were so many people that came in and went. And, like, it was really hard, actually, to find the right members, especially for an all-female band. Um, but, yeah, so then we jammed. And, um, yeah, it was it was just, it just made such sense. The magic. Yeah, that first jam was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I get it. It's so good. <laughs> And that I was looking lovely. for a keys player as well at the time, um, but then Hannah brought the guitar. Well, that's what we did. Like we, yeah. So you sent me the, the demos, and I learned them on keys. And then there's another song. I can't remember whether you sent me this song or whether you just played it in yeah. rehearsal. And I was like, I can't hear keys on this, but there's a guitar in reception. Then we go get the guitar, and then yeah, and then we just like started jamming with the guitars. And I was like, no, this though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's I think it's so rare that like from the first moment you you meet another musician that it's like, ah, so what you're thinking and what I'm thinking they're connecting and they're working very well. <laughs> you know, it's just um it was just really um magical. Uh and then so yeah, we kind of started Hawks from that point really. And so then it was like, right, we need to find a bass player, we need to find a drummer. Um and I was doing this really tough gig in Soho at the time, like this all night function gig that was really underpaid and um, hated the songs. And Jess oh, no. was playing drums on that same fu- in that same function band. And so we just bonded over our despair at um, <laughs> how bad the gig was, um, but also like we're a fan of each other's playing. Oh. Um, and yeah, so then she came and auditioned for the band and that worked out perfectly. And uh, Julia joined our lineup pretty recently, although mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like it. It's just that's also just another thing. That's why it's so cool that none of us knew each other or had any mutual friends. Cause, I like that. Yeah, all four of us just like, it makes sense. You just know, bring it's, new it's... ideas and... Uh... It's just nice that you find that person because it is a relationship at the end of the day, you know. Um, a marriage, really. It's, yeah, it really yeah. is. Four way marriage. Spend, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you spend a lot of time with your bandmates, especially yeah. when you're on tour. Mm. And uh, how how was like your your first gig as Hawks? Like that was it. I've got we've got our lineup. This sounding amazing. Got a gig booked. How was that like? The first gig. Yes. The first ever gig. Wow. Wow, well, first ever gig, what, yeah. That was Nambuka. <laughs> was that Nambuka? With a different drummer and a different bass player. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> um, I feel like the first time that we actually tested this most recent lineup was with the, uh, it was with a tour, wasn't it? For the EP launch. Oh, EP with Blackheart. Yeah. Black that April. was a great gig. That was That magical. was a great gig. That was a crazy gig. Everyone was just like, we were just on a high like just like just so excited to play yeah. and then and it was friday night and the audience was just so up for it and you just like yeah. like we just walked Singing in the, the room words, and, oh. You know, it was, oh wow like i guess the first gig as the four of us is this lineup is yes drastically yeah. different to the first yeah yeah play. yeah i want that to be my first <laughs> yes <laughs> do you know what it's just like no one started being absolutely incredible you know you start from somewhere and then you find your groove and then what works what doesn't and then uh just take things from there don't you and like with anything in this life to be honest Mm. you're evolving basically so it's that always it. it's always just growing together as well but yeah it's it's it really is interesting that when you gig together for the first time when you go on tour for the first time which we did at the end of um, June we went on tour with Tremonti that's a that's a huge test you, you just put four people in, in a van together for several hours mm-hmm. and you get them in a, such an it's a really emotional place playing a gig. There's so much involved. It means so much for everyone. Sometimes there are technical issues. Sometimes, you know, some some unexpected element appears. And if you don't have really good chemistry, mm. uh, you, you just, you're going to find out <laughs> pretty, pretty soon. And so the fact that we just clicked and, and it works so well, it really feels magical. It's, it's, um, it's pretty amazing. And that's why, you know, writing and, and doing things together as a band, it, it's just, pleasure we want to put the work in we want to work together as a unit it's fantastic it's 
yeah, it's really good when it feels like love rather than a chore. Yeah. You know, it feels you're just doing what you're loving, what you love and just having fun. And that's the whole thing. And talking about having fun, you guys have had a really busy summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been very, very busy. You've been here, there and everywhere. Mm. And also, let me touch upon, like, I need I need to say this. Going on tour with Tremonti. You played yeah. with Tremonti. Okay. Oh my god, I love Tremonti. He's the sweetest person in metal. You Isn't know what I mean? Yeah. Rock and metal. And uh, him releasing that, like, was it like a jazz EP or something like that? Um uh-huh, Frank yeah. Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Was it so- something really, really different? I loved it. I'm not, you know, not really a fan of the genre, but I loved it. So how is it like for you doing this? Like, especially on not being a band for a very long, you know, not a long time. How did that how did that feel like? It was a real I'm honor. Jealous. Like <laughs> yeah. It was it was I mean we had about a month to prepare for it and so I think all of us were like okay shit. Yeah. We need to step it up. <laughs> like we need we you know we need to get new gear, we need to have in-ear monitors like cuz up until now our setup has been very like rough and ready. We just kind of go on stage and we just play, but this forced us to be more professional, I guess, and you know be really ready for playing with um such a massive artist you know mm-hmm. and and also the stages that we got to play and the crowds we got to play to the cities that we'd never been in before and we were welcomed so warmly like Tremonti were all of them their and their whole crew like they were such lovely guys and so genuine and really made us feel at home and it was the best experience like it, I, I, I think we all really cherish that time um, it was so much fun. Yeah, the the Tremonti community in general. So yeah, the 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 band and the crew are obviously amazing and just top top of their game mm-hmm. and super welcoming. So it's just like tick tick tick. Everyone's lovely and amazing. But the fans, the fans are so cool. So and they true, all turned yeah. up for like the support band. You know, like, I've been to gigs and no one's there for the support. Like, you know, it's normal. We were kind of half expecting that, but everyone was just so on it and yeah, just really really welcoming across the board it was really lovely and to be like a genuine yeah. fan of the artist that you're supporting as well so I can't remember how many dates we did with them but I think it was what like two weeks or something yeah. and yeah. every night that's we, incredible we, we would go into the mosh pit and like really live their set and it was never tiring like every single to finish playing your own show and then to go and mosh to Tremonti was just the the best sequence of events like we were just so happy the, the whole time. There's uh, like an old Portuguese saying, uh, something along the lines of, if you are running for the love of running, you will never get tired. So it's, you know, you love what you're doing. So, you know, you know you're not going to get tired of doing so, you know, yeah, and yeah. Um, it's it's always, it's true, you know, it really is. And done all that stuff with Tremonti. And which other artists would you like to collaborate one day? It was on your list. Mm-hmm. Either a tour, it could be a tour, it could be like a song, maybe. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all do love Nova Twins. We... They are awesome. Yeah, we really love Very them. Cool. And Architects. Yes. And also Petrol Girls. Um, In terms of like, yes. and power and energy um like we were playing their latest record in the van the other day and like i find them incredibly inspiring as as a band and yeah i think like they they would be amazing to work with as well but they're at smaller scale yeah. i guess still I, I don't think it matters you know mm-hmm. what i mean when you you know you like a band you like a band doesn't matter if they have a million fans or a thousand or even less mm-hmm. and that's what i see the first time that i saw you play which i only caught the tail end of your set and i was very very upset uh was at bloodstock uh, last... oh no way okay yeah. It was honestly like uh, I sadly got coronavirus and I think mm. <laughs> I was feeling uh, very poorly around the festival and I didn't know what it was because oh, I had no. yeah, I'd had COVID previously and I'd always like done the tests. I did tests every day and it was negative, negative. And I'm like, why do I feel so rough? And uh, got home on the Monday or Tuesday, whatever it was, done a test positive, And I was just like, 
God mm. damn it. And you know, I, <laughs> I was so poorly. But yeah, so, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so I only caught you like at the tail end of your set. I was very, very upset, but hey ho. <laughs> I'm sure I'll, I'll catch you another time. But that was that your first uh, festival, like big festival? Yes. Yeah, I mean it's the biggest crowd. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah we had done a couple of festivals, but that was like you know the proper big tent crowd experience. And yeah. also it was our first gig out oh, for like nine was it nine months? Because obviously yeah, there was yeah true. COVID. It, it like we hadn't played for absolutely ages. I can't remember. It's a lot it, of it was bands. like nine or ten months or something. Yeah. So we were all just like, oh my god, we can't really like. Yeah, I was so yeah. anxious that whole week leading up to it, being like, what what if this happens or if that happens? Same. same. And just being yeah. around that many people again you know like it was yes. to, like to get back in that headspace it was like it was it was a lot it was very intense yeah but then when we just got out on stage we were just like oh yeah I remember this is fun it's like <laughs> riding a bike isn't it it's like riding a bike you get used to it you get the, the uh, groove you gain the groove and the, a taste for doing so and then it's just like you don't want anything else it's like the oh, way God, forward yeah. Yeah, yeah honestly the come down post tour or festival or everything is just I still don't know how to cope with it really no, the no. festival blues are for real honestly festival honestly. blues are awful as even as uh, you know performing working or just going you know as a punter mm-hmm. it is just like you, the Monday and the Tuesday you're home and you're just like oh I want to go back to that dirty field again yeah, yeah. I guess also like the, the oxytocin from a mosh pit. Do you oh know my what god. I mean? All this yes. touch and like you know, it just feels amazing and then you go home and it's like, no. Oh. <laughs> Also, you something. just come back with oh yeah. sorry go on, I was just sorry. gonna say like you you go away for like you know two days three days and you come back with like 700,000 stories and you're just like oh my god and then this happened and then this happened it's just like so much happens in those days that yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me it's like you know in the supermarket if anyone touches me I'm like uh what are you doing yeah, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, a mosh pit I'm like come on yes <laughs> let's go destroy me <laughs> yes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because yeah. of Bloodstock, um, you got that set because you won the um, Metal to the Masses, London, because that's where you're you know, mainly based mm. at that year. So yeah. that was very good indeed, because, you know, like there's all these regional bands. There's so many that apply, uh, so many that do not succeed. Mm. And, uh, you know, you guys did and played and had a hell of a time. And that was really good for your career as well, because so many people, people that went to you know got recommended by their friends and peers and went to see you came back and just like do you know what I'm going to buy their album I'm going to buy their stuff people that spoke to me about it as well and you know me being like I'm really jealous that you got to see Mm. the full set and I didn't um so that is pretty good isn't it wouldn't you say so (laughs) yeah yeah I mean that was that was a special one for us for sure yeah. yeah. Oh, that uh, metal to the masses gig as well. Oh my yeah. god! Like we were in pieces before that. I think I must oh have been. God. I was horrifically hungover. Like oh, I'd, bless had you. This, <laughs> I'd thrown a party at my place like the night before, and I was like, "I'll be responsible. I won't drink." But then, of course, you know how it goes. <laughs> yes. Um, and um, and then Jess had some kind of stomach bug and was oh, like no. throwing up right yeah she was genuinely stage. just ill with something i mean yeah, yeah there's a photo not meant to laugh i'm sorry <laughs> oh, no, like, it was, i mean it, it worked was, out in the end <laughs> it, it was so ridiculous you kind of had to laugh like in that because in the venue there were like these kind of booths there was no like green room or anything so it's just like just food <laughs> and then i i felt all right and i was like really up for the gig and then Oh, you could just see like my bandmates like it was like a war field and <laughs> just like strewn across his booth like passed out I'm like right I mean we're on in half an hour so I'm going to know how we're gonna do this yeah but everyone rallied like, like yeah how you guys did it like Jess especially she looked she looked awful I mean uh, yeah. she was like properly ill and to play yeah and then you fronting it being that hangover I've, I've played hangover and it's absolutely oh, horrendous. No. I just never want to do it again. Like, oh god. I feel like, you, say, like oh. you enter this um d- delirium state, you know? Like I think I sweated it all out in that gig. <laughs> like it just was all coming out in bucket loads. And, like, that's probably how it how it coped. If you can do it and win, you can take over the world. <laughs> 
There you go. Like you are. Yeah. So you can it. take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, now, work wise, you've released, uh, you know, your first EP uh, tw- in 2020, Deadlands, did really well. Did really, really well indeed. Were you expect, well, obviously, you're always expecting to do, not expecting to do well, you're hoping to do well. However, how did you deal with with it doing so well? <laughs> Was it a bit overwhelming? It was really oh, cool. it, yeah, it just went to our heads. And yeah, just, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're an absolute you know? nightmare now. <laughs> we're on a massive power trip still from that time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we didn't see that much time, of it, though, right? It? Yeah, because uh, that was released during during lockdown. lockdown. Yeah. So it was all the kind of we've got it ready to go. When should we release it? And we were working with someone then who's given us a bit of advice, and they were like, I don't know. I'm like, cool. <laughs> no one knew what the fuck was going on during that time. No one knew. Do you know? Oh, you don't know either. Oh, God, no. So we just bit the bullet and released it in the end. And yeah. yeah like, luckily, it did go down well. But it was just, the whole time was just crazy. And you didn't really see anyone. So. No. I mean, actually, yeah, I, I created this really nerdy folder with plastic wallets of all the press that we got of Deadlands, because we did get some pretty good press, yeah, we did, there, yeah, like yeah. Metal Hammer and Classic Rock and Rock Sound and yeah. Yeah, we went Track of the Week, yeah, the Classic Rock uh, Track of the Week, didn't we? That kind of thing. So that was Yeah, the hot list of 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did, we did get good stuff. We did all right. <laughs> 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 no, that that's really good though. And then um I think you know 2020 uh I like to call it the blip because that's what it was for me. It was just sort of like cuz everything stopped and uh but um I think when it comes to music people needed music more than ever to cope. Mm. So I think it was uh, a really good thing to actually release brand new music uh mm. in 2020 because people just needed cuz people were like watching uh, TV and listening to music more than ever because they had more time mm-hmm. and uh, you know I know it's a pandemic and this and that and the other but I think you have to think about the positive side of it in a way you know I know Covid sucks it's crap but you uh, <laughs> take a bad situation and just you know find the positives in it somewhat and uh, I thought it was really good to actually release new music and release new stuff in 2020. That's why I'm, you know, I started doing this because I thought, what the heck? Mm. Let's go and do it and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, we're on season two now, so that's it didn't go too badly, I guess. Nice. Um, awesome. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, and now let's just go back to uh, let's just come to now. You've done all this stuff. These past two years have been really busy, really good for you. Just um, you released your latest one. You're only as loud as you shout right now. I had to train how to say that because I don't know. Like for me, my first language is Portuguese. So I have to think about everything that I'm saying and try to translate it. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult sometimes. Uh, (laughs) Anywho, um, it's doing pretty well as well. Like you're on fire. (laughs) Oh, thanks. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely on fire are you um what are you gonna do right now are you gonna promote it you're gonna take a break you're gonna write more stuff what's happening now album is now um mm-hmm. yeah we don't really yeah we don't really uh leave any time for breaks it's like yeah we'll, we'll already be recording the next thing when mm-hmm. we're releasing something else you know so at the moment we're fundraising to record our debut album which Ooh. feels like the right time and yeah so I think now is going to be a period of like the odd gig here and there and um writing mainly yeah, yeah. writing tomorrow we're writing tomorrow, writing yeah. tomorrow. oh that's so cool I'll have, I'll have the pizzas out ready for writing nice <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's all... head of snacks I'm head of snacks <laughs> oh yeah do you all just gather around get some snacks get some ideas flowing and write some stuff yeah, um, exactly. yeah. You can't write vital <laughs> like they are very very important the, oh my god like as a side note but food is so so important in this <laughs> band and the other day we were driving to burn it down festival which yeah. turned out to be 
on the other end of the world, like yeah. Turkey, you know, and oh, you I know. be able to make it like no problem, but it took six hours. And so oh, gosh, yeah. we thought we were going to miss the festival slot. So we were like, okay, there's no time to stop for food. So we had to kind of find what we had in the van to, um, to eat. And so we had bread and oil and salt and chutney. chutney. Yeah, oh, God. and yeah. we made these these um oil sandwiches or Chinese sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if everyone could choose the combination, it's like like the worst subway in the world, basically. Like, would you like butter or oil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or both. We have both. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The red was not... like a million years old as well. Oh it no. Was like... Five being clearance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's it wasn't moldy. Was yeah. <laughs> nothing worse than stale bread though. Oh, just thinking. It was alright yeah, to well. be fair. It's just it's just unex- inexplicable because you look at it and you think, how can this be more than a week old and on clearance and we're eating it and we're not and it tastes alright? Like, is bread real? This is not real bread. It's not- <laughs> yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not real bread. Yeah. <laughs> No, like quite recently you got endorsed by Jackson. That is super cool. And I have a question from a friend of mine, Tim. He's a big fan of the band and uh, he's asked me to ask you. So you've been presented with a new guitar, obviously based for Julia. Have you given their new instruments names? That's all I, he wants to know. I'm not a namer. I'm not a namer. Of I them. don't do that, no. My sister does it to everything. She names like the car. She like everything has got, her plant has got a name, like everything's got a name. <laughs> and I'm just the exact opposite. So I just, yeah, I call my old guitar my good boy and this one is my pointy boy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's as far as I'm going with my name I actually love that <laughs> I don't know what my third guitar would be <laughs> but you're, but you're Blade boy boy. such a good boy he's a good boy he's such he a good boy really he's so obedient with <laughs> things absolutely adorable <laughs> uh, yeah this yeah. is a pointy boy <laughs> yeah I tried to find a name I haven't set on one someone said I should name it Clements and I just <laughs> thought that's quite I like that <laughs> but it, there's something kind of sophisticated about it. Then there was a lot of like, oh, you should call it Michael. No. But no, I'm, no. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I quite like the idea of giving it a name like, you know, Dave or <laughs> something Gary. basic. Well, not just basic. Some, but... Just you know, you're a traditional name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Don't. I'm I'm undecided. <laughs> sorry, sorry to not give a, a good response. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's hard because there are so many great names. You don't want to you don't want to like give it one and then oh shit, something better comes along. That's but... it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how people name their children. No, you know, it's, it's very difficult. One more reason not to have any. <laughs> <laughs> I well, have right. two. I have two of those. I have two of those children. Oh. <laughs> and uh, well my uh, my daughter's called Alice because of Alice in Wonderland but not just not the Disneyfied version uh, is more the original story so the original story is Alice was a warrior and she was very curious about everything mm. so when she was born she just opened her eyes and her eyes are like big like mine and she just opened her eyes and it, it, it was like she was just so curious about where am I and what's, what's happening and she wanted to like touch everything even as a newborn so it was appropriate That's and cool. my son is uh, called Logan because me and my husband we are uh, geeks so it was with Wolverine from, you know, oh, sure. <laughs> from the X-Men. Brilliant. And because uh, sadly, my when my son was born, he was very, very ill. Um, however, he healed really quickly. Within 24 hours, it was absolutely fine. And he was going to get discharged before me because I got poorly as well. So he healed so, so quickly like a wolf like the wolverine from x-men so there you go that's how we me and my husband picked the names of our kids they mean something to us and you know it's kind of related to, to them and that sort of thing and that's cool you didn't have them like pre-prepared then you just like this is the story and this is like it was just more of like 
uh, we liked those names. We just thought when they're born, we'll see what, you know, if they look like an Alice and a Logan, mm. uh, perhaps. And uh, they could have been called something else if we thought it was appropriate. But yeah, that's just how it happened. It's just how life happens sometimes, you know. And yeah, it was perfect, I guess. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> I name all my, you know, most of the things I have, even my, you know, my car, because it's green, so it's called Emerald. Uh, <laughs> but I'm struggling. You see this little guy here? Yeah. Oh. He is. Yeah. So he's um one of those reversible like teddies, you know. So he's very happy with the uh, pride colors and stuff like that. And then on the other side, he's very blue with a very frowny face. But I don't know. Like uh, I call him frowny face when he's blue sometimes. Um, and but I'm still struggling to find a name for this little guy. Oh. So I've I've been thinking about it and I don't know, don't know something rainbowy, but then if I call it rainbowy, then it might sound weird. Um <sighs> so yeah, at home we are um, um neurodivergent, autism. Mm. Both of my kids have autism and uh, I have dyslexia and so we all like somewhat neurodivergent. So we have lots of these fluffy things around the house because it's good for like, you know, when you need that sensory uh, aspect mm. of objects and right, cool. Yeah. I just yeah. <laughs> spend like yeah. five minutes talking about myself. Uh- <laughs> great i've been honestly like forever i've been wanting to talk to you about music and everything else and uh, to see what you know where you're up to and um i love that we in the rocky metal community we are having more and more um all-female bands hmm more and more and I'm loving this I want to push this forward you know I want to promote as many as I can and talk to as many as I can you know Uh, especially uh, people well bands and artists from the LGBTQIA plus community and all you know the queers the gays and the days this is what we are we're aiming for as well so get all that good stuff out there yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's been lovely to speak to you. Yeah, and oh, hopefully, fun. hopefully in the few months we can catch up. If um, you know when you've got anything like anything, just let me know when you've got something new. When you promote it, if you've got like any ideas, like anything, I want to hear about you all the time. So, sure. oh, yeah, you're like my new favorite you. band. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Keep doing all the good things that you're doing. And <laughs> lovely to meet you. Yeah, thank you again. so so much. Grab a cup of podcast with Cat Wright.